Good morning and welcome to worship. It's good to have you join us for this online celebration of Palm Sunday today as we begin Holy Week. If you do have any prayer requests, we ask that you would type those in on the Facebook feed and we have somebody monitoring that. We will include those prayers later on in the service. Let's begin with a responsive reading. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Christ was oppressed and he was afflicted. Like a lamb that is led to the slaughter. And like a sheep that before its shearers is silent. Christ was wounded for our transgressions. Crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the punishment that made us whole. And by his wounds we are healed. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess to you that we have broken your commandments by our own thoughts, words, and deeds. In our inner hearts, we have desired glory only for ourselves and not for you alone. We have not loved our brothers and sisters as we ought, and we have not cared for your creation. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and give us the healing power of your love that we may walk again in your ways and live to the glory of your holy name. Amen. God is gracious and merciful and he desires that we be made free of the burden of our sins. Through Jesus Christ who bore the cross for our sake and for the sake of the whole world, there is healing hope and life. Your sins are forgiven in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
season on our Wednesdays in worship, we have been under the theme, By His Wounds. And we were looking at the Ten Commandments. And we were going to finish up that series through this Holy Week with our worship as well. And we begin today by looking at Commandments 9 and 10. And that's our Old Testament reading for today from Exodus chapter 20. Looking at verse 17. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife or his manservant or maidservant, his ox or donkey or anything that belongs to your neighbor. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And our second reading comes to us from Philippians chapter 2, verses 5 through 11. Your attitude should be the same as that of Christ Jesus, who, being in very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be grasped, but made himself nothing, taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness. And being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to death even death on a cross. Therefore God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And the gospel reading for today is from John chapter 12, beginning at verse 12. The next day the crowd that had come for the feast heard that Jesus was on his way to Jerusalem. They took palm branches and went out to meet him shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the King of Israel. Jesus found a young donkey and sat upon it, as it is written. Do not be afraid, O daughter of Zion. See, your king is coming, seated on a donkey's colt. At first, his disciples did not understand all this. Only after Jesus was glorified did they realize that these things had been written about him and that they had done these things to him. Now the crowd that was with him when he called Lazarus from the tomb and raised him from the dead continued to spread the word. Many people, because they had heard that he had given this miraculous sign, went out to meet him. So the Pharisees said to one another, see this is getting us nowhere. Look how the whole world has gone after him. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God the Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Today we think about the wounds that come from coveting power. 
It sure looks as though Jesus was finally coming into his own. This day we call Palm Sunday. Shows us what we were expecting all along. Here he is at the pinnacle of his popularity and power and glory. He entered Jesus, Jerusalem as a conquering hero. Something that we oftentimes call the triumphal entry. The people were shouting to him as, he was, as though he were their king. The son of David. His popularity as a healer preceded him. The one who raised Lazarus from the dead, that elevated him to a position of prestige and honor. The people welcomed him to town that day. Well, most of the people did. And they did so with the attitude of, that's what I'm talking about. That's what I've been waiting for. This is the Messiah we've been wanting all along. Let's do this, Jesus. Come on. Let's take your kingdom. Let's take your power. Let's get the Romans out of here. Let's set up your kingdom on earth. That was the exuberant, joyful attitude of the crowds that were shouting, Hosanna. But not everyone was welcoming him with open arms. His critics were bemoaning his entry. They said, look, the whole world has gone after him. And they're despairing. They were jealous of the popularity that Jesus had among the people because that's what they wanted. They wanted to be the ones that the people looked up to. They were afraid their position, their power, their honor was all going to be handed over to Jesus. He was being raised up and there would be nothing left for them. They were not willing to step aside for this virtually unknown rabbi to take their place from them. But the people kept crying, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord! Blessed is the King of Israel! The sin of those Jewish leaders that day is a sin against those last two commandments. The ones that deal with coveting. Coveting is normally understood and defined as being sinful desires. Commandments 9 and 10 forbid us seeking that which is not rightfully ours to possess. Seeking the very things and sometimes the people that belong to others. That's what's being forbidden here. It is a sin of the heart and a sin of the mind that oftentimes we mask and hide from the world around us. They don't see it. But it's still a sin. And these two commandments that forbid coveting, coveting the things that belong to our neighbor, they don't let any of us off the hook. The irony here is that the Jews thought Jesus was coveting power and nothing could have been further from the truth. He already had it all before he was born. On the contrary, instead of coveting power, he had it. And he laid all that aside when he came down here to earth. Philippians 2 says, Who, Jesus, who, being in very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be grasped, but made himself nothing, taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness. And being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to death, even death on a cross. Jesus would empty himself of the power he had as God so that he could do everything needed for the salvation of all of us. Everything. Even death on a cross. He truly was that son of David. The promised Messiah. But he did not come into this world to occupy a position of power in the eyes of men. He was anointed for another purpose. 
He was the one set aside to be that Lamb of God who would die for the sins of the world. The only crown that he wore was made out of thorns. The purple robe of a king was placed upon him not to honor him, but to ridicule and mock. And the crowds that once shouted, Hosanna in the highest, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, were not to be heard a few days later when the crowd was shouting, Crucify him! Crucify him! We have to wonder if it was perhaps some of the same people who had welcomed Jesus as king who were now calling for his death. What was in store for Jesus had nothing to do with what the world considers to be powerful. The eyes of sinful man, they don't see any glory or power in the wounds that Jesus bore. They only see a man who was beaten and deprived of everything that the world values. They see a man who was defeated. They see a man who looks weak and helpless all of this was described so spot on, so clearly, by the prophet Isaiah long before it happened. He was talking about this servant who would suffer for us all in Isaiah 53. He had no beauty or majesty to attract us to him. Nothing in his appearance that we should desire him. He was despised and rejected by men. A man of sorrows and familiar with suffering. Like one from whom men hide their faces, he was despised, and we esteemed him not. Surely he took up our infirmities and carried our sorrows, yet we considered him stricken by God, smitten by him, and afflicted. That is not the description of someone who covets power and honor and glory. It's exactly the opposite. Yet on the cross, as he dies from the wounds of rejection and abandonment, we discover that his critics were right. The whole world has gone after him. Not because of fame or power or honor or prestige or anything else that the world praises so highly. No, the whole world is going after him because he is the crucified Lord. The one whom we cherish. The one whom we confess. The one in whom we put all our confidence. He left his power and majesty and laid down his life for the sake of the whole world. He paid the penalty for every single sin. And he gives us his righteousness. By his wounds, we are healed. Going back again to that second reading that I shared with you earlier, we're reminded that this one who was crucified is the exact same one that God raised up again. Therefore God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. The greatest healing the world will ever see, the, the greatest healing the world will ever know, and the only healing that we really ever need. Christians around the world today continue to cry out, Hosanna, whether they realize it or not. All the prayers that have been offered in recent weeks, Lord, save us from this pandemic. Lord, save us from this virus. Those are cries of Hosanna. Hosanna means, Lord, save us. And there's nothing wrong with that prayer. As long as we pray it, 
with the attitude that Jesus had. Not my will, Lord, but yours be done. And we do so in the context of knowing and remembering and clinging to the fact that he has already given us that biggest healing we need. He's already saved us from sin and death and given us the certainty of salvation. Life. Life eternal with him. By his wounds we are healed. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's speak our faith together using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. In our prayers this morning, Gail Ring has asked that we pray for her next door neighbor, Debbie Olds. And the Windorfs request prayers for a friend, Lisa Ford, who has medical issues. Let us pray. Let us pray for the church, for all in need, and for the whole of God's creation. That as we now enter this holiest of weeks, you may give your people hope that it is Jesus, our Lord, who leads the way and takes into his body on the cross the sins of the whole world. Hear us, O God. That we may put away our own false desires and boast only of the cross of Christ. Hear us, O God. That all who seek righteousness may find the hope of righteousness in our Lord, who bore the cross for them and for all. Hear us, O God. That we may honor all people as our brothers and sisters and share Christ's blessing of peace and salvation. Heal us, O God. For those who have made the procession from life to death, we pray especially with thanksgiving for the life of Gary Miller. That they may join the endless chorus of praise at the throne of God. Heal us, O God. Father, we lift before you those who are in our hearts and minds. With Gail, we pray for her next-door neighbor, Debbie, and whatever situation she is in, in right now. We also pray for all those who have medical issues. We name before you today Lisa Ford. Father, we pray for the countless victims of this virus, that your healing presence would be with them. Even if you don't give them physical healing, that you would remind them of the healing that Jesus has accomplished for them all. Father, we continue to pray for our nation, for all those who are treating the ill, for those who are seeking vaccines and treatments and cures, for our first responders. Lord, give them protection and the assurance that comes from knowing the healing that they have in Christ. Into your healing wounded hands for our sake, we commend all for whom we pray. By Christ's wounds we are healed. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace.
glad you could join us today for this broadcast of our worship services. Throughout this Holy Week, we will continue to have worship. We will have our Thursday and Friday services online on those days. There will not be a live broadcast, but there will be taped services that you can view throughout the day if you wish. And then next Sunday, Easter, we will be having our drive-in Easter service here at Grace. We encourage you to join us for that day. We will have uh, people drive up. We'll have people directing you where to park in the parking lot so all the cars are facing the same direction. And we can join one another, even in our separation, to celebrate the resurrection together. We will be having communion as part of that service. I had announced previously that we would be doing an online communion for our Maundy Thursday service. Evidently, there have been some churches that are doing this, and I thought it would be a good solution to provide communion for our people. But some of the brother pastors in our church body have been raising quite a ruckus about this and causing some grief for those who have been doing so. And rather than put grace through any of that, I decided we would go ahead and just fast a little bit longer from communion, and we will do it to get when we can join together on Easter. Something else I'd like to ask you to consider is if you haven't done so, I know some of you have gone ahead and mailed your contributions in, if, and some of you have been giving online. If you are able to do so and would like to send in your contributions, you can certainly send them through the mail or through the Give Plus app, or you can just wait till Easter Sunday when you're able to join us. We will be taking up a collection at our service on that day, and uh, we'll also, as I said, we'll be providing you with communion. We have obtained some pre-packaged communion elements. They're all sealed up. They were prepared in a food facility uh, with great care so that we'll be able to pass those out to each individual car for you to use uh, in your reception of the body and blood of Jesus in our worship together next week. So we hope you'll be able to join us. If any of our members out there have any needs or concerns, please do not hesitate to call me here at the church or on my cell phone. We want to make sure we're caring for one another. I can't I haven't been in touch with all of you. I know our elders have been trying to contact their groups and keep in touch. But if you have any needs, please be sure in contact and we will try to help you any way we can. God's blessings be with you this week.